I'm Rich Fund, and I am on a herb quest. Really, I've kind of been on a herb quest ever since I've been able to walk around the woods. If there's a reptile or amphibian that I don't know, I want to get to know it. And I think the first reptile amphibian that I ever caught must have been the green frog. Around the age of six or seven, by my grandparents' pond, I was fast enough to finally catch one. And that is where my love of reptiles and amphibians began. In the years growing up, I've probably caught more green frogs than any other kind of frog. I'm at 40th Street Pond in my hometown of Port Huron. This is a place where many of those green frogs back in the day I've caught. But along much of the perimeter of this pond are reeds like this. A great place for the green frog to be calling out for the females and to establish its territory. That's where the breeding and mating happens. They got activity here during the day, usually when the sun's out, but also I was here not too many nights ago, hearing them give the same kind of activity during the nighttime too. And that rolling, that's something that they also have to establish the territory. Other than that, the call is pretty much like a banjo string, like dong. Well, you'll hear plenty, I think. They're already partying without me. All right, let's get to it. Well, wading in, the water's nice and clear. I'll try to be really slow not disturb them. And of course, I want to be quiet. Let's start that right now. Lots of dragonfly activity. I tell you, they are not making this one easy. I haven't been hearing much from them now. Probably because I'm around. No real idea if you can see that. If I've even zoomed into the right spot. I think I have. I do see a painted turtle. I believe it's a painted turtle. He's not going to let me get close to him, but he's kind of making his way through the, the bush there. But again, trying to trying to find those green frogs. It's been an hour. We'll keep going. Okay, I was out here looking for some green frogs, but chance of currents. We got a snapping turtle right there in the wild. It's right underneath that branch. Alright. Let's see if I can pull him out. Nice and in focus in case I get bit. <laughs> First use the least invasive approach of my boot. safely to handle a snapper. Not that there is only this is the safer way. There is no safe way to handle the snapper. But seeming pretty comfortable with me. Not putting up too much of a fight. Another head. Can snap backwards half the length of their shell, so I'm keeping my thumb. Not that close. Try to rinse off a little bit the head. So I'll beat a little bit. All right. Looks like we got a little bit of a snapper here. Let's get a closer look. Oh, not happy with me. It's gonna start peeing soon. Now, <laughs> we already have an episode on the uh, snapping turtle, but that was when I was rescuing one from crossing a road. Here we have one in the wild, and from where the cloaca is, the port wherever all the business happens, ask your parents, uh, that there is pretty close to the base of the shell, so I believe this is a female. Pretty sure. Don't really feel like flipping this one upside down. They were just kind of waiting for some fish to come by the creek to snap at, so I have Disturbed her a little bit, but beautiful girl, and pretty young too, not too much wear on the shell, and I think it's worth also noting, you know, they're known as an aggressive turtle, right? But look at, I've picked her up, she's not even really snapping at me. I mean, I haven't given her much of a chance to see something to snap at, but she's not crazy flying around, she's kind of calm and timid. If you're looking for me to get her to snap at something, well, 
There's other videos for that. I don't care to stress the animal. Don't get me wrong, it's interesting to look at. I understand, but I'm not going to stress her out for that. All right, we're going to put her back. Keep looking for the green frog. All right, girl. Now, normally I do try to show some footage of the release, just to show, like, I'm always putting them back where I could, um, where I found them. But uh, right when I was about to go for the camera, that's when she peed on my hand a whole lot. It was just time to get her down there and let her go. So, um, but, yep, right back where she went. Let's keep herping. All right. Ugh. Round two. So, out here again, uh, I am hearing them. Not as much as about two nights ago, but I'm hearing them. And also, I have visually seen a few. I think already we're going to have some better luck. I think we got one out there. I got one right here. Males calling. This is a beautiful night. Hypnotized by the light, too. I made some noise, they all kind of quieted down. See this guy over here. Whoa. That is a big one. We got this male here. We also have another male out here. Sure, now you croak. Now you give a call. Couldn't have done that earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, if like the lights pointed at them, I think that definitely influences whether or not they do it. Whether or not they give a call. What say you? Mm-hmm. Sorry, bud. Didn't really mean to disturb. All right. Finally. <laughs> the elusive green frog. More elusive than I thought it was going to be. But we had some great luck there. Um, this has been awesome. Such a great night. This has definitely been one of the best herping nights I've had in my adult life. You know, uh, just getting to see uh, what a painted turtle, a snapping turtle, a garter snake when I first got here that wasn't even on camera. We got the green frog, and even uh, the eastern gray tree frog was out here for a bit. All right, it's been a day. I'm Rich Lund. Thank you for herping with me. Let's try to leave nature 
as good or better than we found it. And I'll see you next time.